But now today we're going to uh, uh, talk about the unity. The victory is in unity. When, uh, when, when we are together, we are stronger. We are more people. And also, when we are together, we, have, uh, uh, we can encourage one to another. We find more hope when we are together than, than when we are alone. And the unity is so important that Jesus himself, he, uh, himself he's trying to teach uh, the church to be together. In Mark 20, uh, chapter 3, 24 and 25, he says, If a kingdom is divided against itself, the kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, the house cannot stand. And we all want a, a stronger church. We want a, a, a big, if I say big, uh, I say a, a big numbers of members in each church. We want a church with uh, their financial is strong, with the membership is, is as a multitude join the every service. But that cannot happen if the church is not united, is not unified in the Lord. Because any, any kingdom, any house divided against itself, the house cannot stand. That's why unity is very important. And the victory is in unity. When we uh, walk together, when we uh, walk the journey, uh, the Christian journey together is where and when we have victory. Christians alone cannot stand. They are not strong enough to raise the rate. We need each other because we are part of God putting in our hands to help us together. And we need to walk together. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10 said this, I appeal to you, brother and sister, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you said, and there be no divisions among you. But that, be, that you be perfectly united in mind and are taught. That means... Uh, the Ecclesiastes book said that no, there is no way that two people can work together and they are not agree. Always there will be a discussion there. They never be agreed. They are not going to the same direction. I remember when, when I started growing up and my father gave me one key for the, church, for the house. And he said, so now you are, you are ordered enough to have a key for the house. But I don't know if that was a good advice or no, but this is what my father said at that time. You see. Sometimes you are better to go to walk alone than with your friends because sometimes your friends are not agree with you. And then you are able to go whatever you want. That would happen. That was fine for, for my father give me that advice, but this is not what the Lord wants from every Christian. The Lord wants to you to walk together and unify it with your brothers and sisters. Sometimes that won't be easy to walk together. But the Lord wants us to be in one mind and one heart. And that one mind and one heart is about our faith. We can maybe not be agreeing our favorite color, what kind of brand the car we want, or maybe what kind of the places you want to go for vacation. That's fine. Maybe we are not agree what kind of the, the uh, uh, political party you join it. That's fine. But we must have to be agree in who we believe and what we believe. And that is in Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit and the Scripture. We must have to be one mind in that. We must have to be one mind in the goal that Jesus placed in our heart and in our church as a community of faith. And it is to reach those who don't know the Lord, to reach them with the gospel. But we need to be united. We have to have unified uh, set of mind. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 13 says, Just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts, form one body, so it is Christ. That's why we need to be together. We all are different. Some differences are just by sight. 
You see, many of you have a different color of the skin, just like mine. Some of you have a different color of your eyes. Some of you speak different than I speak or somebody else. But we need each other. Because Jesus put, or the Holy Spirit gave to us a gift, abilities, knowledge that we all need from one to another. I don't know how to play the, the keyboard, but I know how to play the guitar. At least I think I know. I know how to preach. That's what I think. Some people say that I don't. But you know, but you know what? God is placing different abilities, different gifts that we need each other. That's why the hands cannot say to the leg, hey, I don't need you. The body says, uh, need all different members. We use more members sometimes than others, but all those are important. Some others, you don't see it, but their work is so vital that without them, we cannot function. You don't see the heart, but if someone takes your heart, say goodbye. I know someone walked with a broken heart, but that's different in a scenario. But, you know, but the Lord also can fix that heart too. But, you know, there is some uh, uh, organs in our body that we don't see, but it's very important. It's the same thing in the church. There is some member of the church who does a great and powerful job that no one sees it. And maybe they never receive one of those palms in the back and say, hey, thank you for your hard work. But their work is very important. And we need it in order to succeed we need to be united. Paul continues saying, For we all baptized by one spirit, so for the form one body, whether Jewish or Gentiles, a slave or free, and we are, we were all given one spirit to drink. Thus to binding us together. The Holy Spirit, the love of the Father, the love of the Son. That keep us bonding us together. Just like in one son says, in one cause. The cause is to please God, to please our creator, to bring all the people, all the nations to the Lord. And this is how can we do. But before we do that, we need to live in harmony. Woohoo! That's nice to be in harmony, see? When all those differences can be worked together. And we can keep our colors. We can keep our way to, to do things. But living in harmony, how can we keep that? Well, the scripture tells us how to, we can live in harmony. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 to 6. Apostle Paul telling us how to do that. If you remember, the Apostle Paul ministry was one of the most diverse ministry that we can find in the Bible. He started his ministry. You remember that he was uh, one of those uh, people who persecuted the believers, the Christians, those who are in the way, and tried to kill them because they said that they're preaching something against with the scripture that he knows, uh, the Hebrew. All the love of Moses' law, he said, oh, they are, they, they, they are against the law. And you know what happened to Peter? One day he goes to Damask, and then when a big bright light said, uh, uh, Paul, Paul, why you, you persecuted me? You, I am the Lord. And he was blind, and he take to the community of faith, and they pray for him, and he recovered his sight, and the Lord said, I want you to preach my gospel. And we know his ministry. But we know that his ministry was one of the most diverse, diverse ministry. Because he not only started preaching to the Hebrews, to the Hebrews or the Israelites, but he realized that God called him to preach to the Gentiles. And he started going to all the Roman Empire and beyond there, preaching the gospel. And his team, his apostle team, was diverse too. He has people who was Greek, people who was Jewish, people who have different nationalities, working and bonding them together because they need 
to show the people that in the diversity, God won the unity of the church. In Ephesians 4, 1 to 6, God, uh, Paul said this, As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling that you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. I like the verse 3. It says, make every effort to keep unity. It's never give up to build that unity. The unity itself, it doesn't make like a miracle. We need to work with that. We need to give up some things in order to keep the unity. That's why we need some, uh, we need several components in order to, co uh, to, to build the unity. And he said it there, we need to be humble, we need to be gentle, we need to be patient. Those three elements sometimes are not the best qualities in our life, but we need it as a church in order to continue growing in our unity. Verse 4, Paul says, There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you are called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, one Father over all, who is over all, through all in all. This is what kept us together. Like I said, we can have a differing opinions to many other things. But at least what we believe, what we think is the call that God has given to us, there we have to have unity. We have to know that we have only one God, one love, one Father, one Holy Spirit. And that is only built in our life as a church. And also as a believer, we have to cultivate that in our life, in our mind all the time. But that requires these three things. Three elements to keep that unity. Decision. That's the first thing. God gave us to us what we call the free will. The capacity to make decisions for our own. And sometimes we need just to have the decision. We have to make the decision to make this work. Some people just give up. And they just look for the places or for a group of people who just think like them, walk like them, talk like them, and do things like them. But some other people just say, I want to make the effort. Even though I have to go far for my place, even though I have to leave my comfort place, I will take a decision to follow what God wants for me. And that was Paul. Paul was a very a high respect pe person. He had a great position. He was respected by the authorities. But he said, you know, the Lord is calling me not to just serve the Jewish. The Lord is calling me to serve the Gentiles. And you know what happened to Paul. He wrote later, uh, oh, I know what is live in poverty. I know what is live in needs. I know what is live uh, uh, running. I know what I live with a, ve a little. Sometimes when we make a decision to follow what the Lord wants, it's not the best, it's not the best by the eyes of the world view. It's not the best situation. Sometimes you will be living with a little, little friends. Maybe your friends go away. Maybe you will be alone. But the Lord always will be respect your decision. Unity is one of them. I want to decide to be at the place where the Lord wants to be, want me to be, with the people who wants me to be. Can I can I talk about my personal experience? Yeah. I, I said, and this week I said to one of my brother and sister here in Christ, that God worked in different in ways that we don't understand. And I said, I had a fellow brother in Moline who does not speak much 
Spanish at all, and he's the pastor of the Spanish church. And God has here me and this church who I have some uh, trouble with my English sometimes. He's not the fluent that I want to, but I want you're the pastor of this church. God works in strange ways. But we have to make the decision to follow what God is calling us to do. Sometimes he's calling us to do something and we say, Lord, but I, I don't feel prepared. I don't know how to do it. Don't worry. If God is calling you because he knows that you are prepared or he wants to prepare you to do the work. That happened with Moses. You know, when God called Moses to, to, to set the Israelites free from the slavery from the Egypt, Lord, but, but I don't know how to speak. I don't have the, uh, I can, I can do this. And the Lord said, I'm calling you, you have to go. But we have to make the decision to obey the Lord, to obey his call, to obey, to overcome any barrier, any walls, any Anything who is against God's will. That's why we got a Real Connection Church reaching beyond border for Christ. Nothing can stop us if we want to do God's will. And then the number two that we need is a commitment. Commitment requires patience, dedication. Commitment needs your entire self and that idea that you're following. You cannot quit at the first trial and the first hard situation. You have to commit yourself to reach the unity. And the third point is action. You can, ha you can be convinced in your mind. You can convince in your heart that that's what you have to do and this is what you have to follow and that's the way that you need to live. But if you don't take the actions, it's nothing's going to happen. That will be just like the academic and the, and the universities. You know, they wrote books, they teach lessons, but when they place that to practice, no one practices that. All the knowledge, all the wisdom, Yes, it's kept in the world's book shelves because no one is going to put in practice. That's why if you are convincing in your heart and you had the, the emotion in your heart too and you got the ideas in your mind but you don't place in action, it's nothing going to happen. Unity never going to happen. We need to take actions. And last week, we learned from Joshua last week when he says in Joshua 24, 14, says, Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River in Egypt and serve the Lord. That is action. That is action. People have to move forward in order to do what God wants to do. We as a church, we need to move forward to keep the unity, to make this church strong with our decisions. But we need to Follow God's model. In order to keep the unity as a brother and sister and keep moving forward what God wants us to do as a person and also as a church, a community of faith, we need to move forward. We need to move forward. We need to, to, to require something in our life in order to achieve this task that God's asking us to do. Because unity requires a humble spirit, a gentleness and patience. A humble spirit, someone who are allowed to, to learn from the Lord. Today we, we talk about that in our Bible study in the morning. Uh, that was uh, Apollos. Remember Apollos, one man who knew the scripture well. He preached the, the scriptures uh, because he knew it. He was like a master. He was a doctor in the scripture. But he don't know a lot about the New, the new, the new, the new Testament. He don't know anything about Jesus. And he was humble and sit down and listen and learning about Jesus. Sometimes we need to be humble. We don't know everything. 
We need the body of Christ working with us. This is what Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3 says. All of us who live among them at one time, gratifying the craving of our flesh and following its desire and thought, like the rest, we were nature deserve a wrath. We need to, we need to live together because we all came from the same background. Maybe not doing the same stuff, but we all came from a background where we need Jesus in our life. And we need to recognize that, that we are not above anybody else. We need to be humble. And humble means to recognize that we are called. We are all God creators. And those who are Christians, brothers and Christians, sisters and Christians, we belong to God. We are his children. Being, being tolerant one to another. And when I say tolerance, it doesn't mean that we approve the uh, sin. Because tolerance is the attitude of the person who respects the opinion, ideas, and attitudes of others, even if they are not, if they are much their own. You know, we can be in disagreement sometimes, but we can tolerate that. But we don't tolerate the sin. We call things, how we call things? As a sin. See? We cannot say anything else. It's a sinful person. We say, okay, this is something that the Lord don't want you to do, but if you want to live that way, it's your decision. But that's not the way the Lord wants you to live. But the Lord is calling us to live. Like Philippians chapter 2, verse 3 says, Do nothing of, of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others about yourself. And that is really hard, isn't it? That is really hard. And that really needs a humble spirit to make others or value other people over yourself. That's really hard. Because we live in a society that we compete all the time. We want to be the number one. I see many students every single day. If someone has an A, they want to have an A plus because they want to be recognized in the class. And they are in sport. They just don't want to be uh, the average uh, uh, guy. They want to be the best player in the game. If we go into the wall, they want to be in the, in the first page of the any magazine. You know, Forbes magazine in the first page. Because we be living a very competition world. And when we read this in the Bible, it hates our head. Hit our egos. Because we want to be recognized. We want to receive the proof from everyone. We want to be above everyone. But God wants to learn. If we want to live in unity, we want to value other people. Above ourselves. Because this part of that God wants from us. He said, love God with all your heart, all your mind. Love your neighbor. And then as you love yourself. When you give the a higher value to other people because you love yourself. It's just not denigrated yourself. You just place in them in the same place that you are. But you give uh, the chance to people to love them because you want to be loved too. And this is what the Bible said. Do others what you want others do to you. If you place other people with respect in the first place, you should receive the same treat if you do that. God is not asking you to feel less. But he one is... You respect yourself, you can give the same respect to others. That's what he said. Because how can I, how can I be one? How can be united? How can be unified in the body of Christ if I don't give the respect that the other needs? 
How can be connected to the body of Christ if I don't recognize that I need my brothers and sisters? I cannot live the, my Christianity by myself. I need my brother, I need my sister who pray for me, to care about me, because that's my responsibility too. Care about my brother and my sister. Carry them with my prayers. Looking for them from their needs. And how can we do this in a church like us? Well, one way that will be being a volunteer at the church. Because if we want to be a, a united church, we cannot take a church as in a restaurant that you just get there and sit down and, and you can order. If you don't like the service, what do people do when they don't like the service in any restaurant? They leave and they come back in? No. Because they just want to be served and serve well. But if we want a united and a stronger Christian life, we should not just expect it to be served. God is expecting us to serve others too. Remember what Jesus himself, Jesus himself teach this. The Son of God did not came to this world to be served, but to serve others and give his life for those who are lost. God is calling us to have a humble life and a servant life. That's the way that we start banding, banding us together with the community of faith that God is placing us. And when we're talking at a local church, we should start thinking about being a volunteer, and I always, God in my witness, also my wife who's here, always says to my wife, well, you know, maybe we are not many, but we have the high, the, I think this is the highest percent in every church that everyone is working in something. Most of our people are working in the worship team, working as a teacher, working as a trustee, working in the board. Everyone has a place. Everyone is placing their uh, abilities they give to the church. Now, we should ask him if we are not being participating in any of this, how can I be a part of the life of the church? What can I do in order to be a part of this body, an active part of the body? You know, one of those is can be a financial partner. I don't know if every one of you, because the pastor don't know who tie or, or he didn't tie or he offering or not offering. This is not my field. I had a wonderful brother in Christ, uh, our, our, our treasurer, Dave, who knows everything. Well, he knows about finances, and he's like a, 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 a king Midas. You know, he puts his hand in the offering and multiplies, like the feet and, and bread for Jesus. You're doing a great job, Dave. Thank you. And the board who make a decision. I have a vice, vice person, um, Beatrice, who make a great decision through there. We had a great community of faith working for the Lord, but also if you are not part of financial part of the church, Maybe we, you should start thinking about <coughs> being a part of this financial supporting the church. Maybe you say, but I, I don't have a lot of money. Well, but the Lord is not asking you a lot of money. He's asking you to participate what he gives you to you and give back whatever he placed it to you first. You're going to return to the Lord what he placed in your hands. And we as a church, we believe in time. It's part of the being obedient to the Lord. And if you work, even though it's the only you make $10 a week, well, you just give how much? $1. If you make $1,000, you just give it $100. It's just time. Giving a little, a little piece of what God is giving to you abundantly. And this is obedience. And this is how you make the, to keep the unity. By speaking well and promoting the church you know one way that we can keep the unity and the church growing is speaking well about your community of faith 
Some people specialize to not w say good things about the places where they work, you know? Some people say, ah, oh, how do you work? Oh, I hate that place. I have to go every single day to the place. I don't like it. I don't like my boss. I don't like my co-workers, you know? And then we say, well, you spend how many hours there? Eight hours a day? How many days? Five, sometimes six? Well, this is not a good way to live. Why you don't chase the work, you know? And here... As a church, I said a community of faith. We should not live that way. This is the place where we can feel uh, 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 grateful. The Lord is placing us in a place where we can learn about Him. We can uh, serve Him. And we have to promote well. Pray for your church. And, and the last thing, and not less important, is to give a good testimony. We should live a life who chose Jesus' life, being a Christ life. You know, because everything that we do with the right hand, that will be erased with the left hand if our testimony out there is not the best. We can pray, we can preach, we can tie, we can sing, we can do whatever you want. But if your testimony out there is not the best, all that you do with your right hand is erased by the left. And we should live in the way that we say that we believe. You know, Paul continued talking about this unity and how can we bond together. He says, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit, Yes, as you are called to one hope, when you are called on Lord, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father in all, who is over all through Jesus the own. You see, the unity of the body of Christ prevent and the unity through our creed. And that's where we need all to be together in what we believe. Remember, a divine house cannot stand. We all need to believe in the same stuff. We have to have their own belief, their own teaching from the Bible. And this is what we believe as a church. And we believe not only just as a church, but as a church who has a Wesleyan heritage is this. And, and, and I want to highlight this today because we need to be on the same page if we want to be united in our faith. And I bring this today because this is what we should believe all together. If there is something different, well, maybe we are not a believer. Because this, this creed is what we, as a Christians, the, all the Orthodox Christians believe in. This is what means that we are a Christian. If we are to disagree with any of this point, we can call anything we want, but they're not a Christian. Do you understand that part? See? This said, we believe in one God. If you say that, say amen. The Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. Do you believe that? Say amen. And one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, begotten from the Father before the ages. Do you believe? Amen. This is what one of those points that we got one of this Sunday in the morning. Okay, uh, Jesus is not only a uh, 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 star being when he born from the Virgin Mary. He was, he has no beginning. He has no ends. He's eternal. His, his pre-existing of Christ is beyond back, beyond back when he born from, from Mary. If you read Genesis chapter 1, 1 and 2, you see the word Jesus Christ working in the creation. 
If you go to John chapter 1, 1, you see Jesus working there. If you go to John chapter 1, 12 to 14, you see Jesus even before everything was created. Anything were created without Jesus. That's why we believe that he is before, before all ages. He came from God. You see, God from God. God from God. This is what the Bible said, no? Ephesians, being God, he denied himself and he became a human. God of God. Life from light. True God. True God from true God. That means he is God himself. He became flesh, but he's still God. Begotten, no may. No one made Jesus. He is because he is himself. Of the same essence of the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. Do you believe that? Now I feel less than men. Amen. We love that too. He became incarnated by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made human. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate. And he suffered and was buried. That's what the Bible teaches us, isn't it? We believe it? Yes. He was incarnated. Emmanuel, God. God among us. What the Bible says. You know, he burned and now we call Emmanuel. God among us. And he is the third day after he was buried. The third day he rose again. According with the scripture. Jesus is not dead. He is alive. Do you believe it? We're still in one pace. He ascended to heaven and he, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. That's what the book of Hebrews teaches us too. He will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will never end. Do you believe in that? And we're waiting for the second coming of Jesus. And we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. He proceeds from the Father and the Son, and with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He spoke through the prophet. That's what uh, the Bible said. Second, Second Timothy chapter 3.16 says that all the scripture is inspired by the Spirit. And no one had their own interpretation of the scripture. Do we believe this? We believe in one holy, universal, and apostolic church. It's just one. The church of Christ. I'm not saying about the church of Christ denomination. I say the church of Christ, the capital C church. That one for Jesus Christ died on the cross and built by the, the apostles when they start preaching the gospel. That's the church, uh, I said. It's universal because it's open to all nations. Just like Jesus said, uh, John says in, in John 3.16, because God gave his only begotten son to die for the whole world. Not just for one nation, for the all nations. That's why the church of Christ is universal church. And it's apostolic because we follow the apostolic uh, teachings. And we affirm one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. And we look forward to the resurrection of the dead and to live in the world to come. And resurrection is very important. It, besides, because it's coming pretty soon, Easter Day, when we believe in resurrection. We believe and resurrections. Paul says, if we don't believe in the resurrection, our faith, it has no value. Because we believe that Jesus Christ was arose from the dead. He resurrected. He's alive. And we will be, if we die before Jesus came back, we will be resurrected by the Lord. We will be arose from dead. And reunited with him. Just like Thessalonians chapter 3 said, that in the clouds we will be reunited with Jesus. Are you we believe in this? Amen. I believe too. And there is no reason why the church should be divided. The church should be united in mind, in heart, in actions. 
because we believe in the same. We should take our hands and walk forward because if our mind and our heart and our deed reflect what God's will is, we will be united, we will be strong, we will be victorious in Jesus Christ. Amen.